Yeah, it's an undisputable fact. Climate change is dramatically affecting the Arctic. Over the last 25 or so years, get this, nearly 50% of the polar ice has melted, and the Arctic continues to warm faster than any other place on Earth. Scientists are trying to figure out exactly why and what's at stake. Sure, the region is opening up for companies interested in extracting natural resources, but at what cost? Hunting far out on the frozen sea ice of the Arctic Ocean can be lonely, and there's never a guarantee that Wally Lisborne from Point Hope, Alaska, will come home with a kill. But what Lisborne has acquired from walking the sea ice season after season is institutional knowledge. Back in the mid-80s, maybe it was thicker, at least four to six feet thick. Now it's not. It's two to four feet thick. A host of researchers in the high north have learned to lean on historical knowledge from people like Wally as they try to get their collective heads around climate change. It's very clear the ice is in a rapid decline and um, we don't completely understand it, but we're getting better at it. It's caused by changes in the environment, including warming in the atmosphere and, and uh, warming in oceans. Mark Ivey is with the U.S. Department of Energy's Atmospheric Radiation Measurement Program, a somewhat lengthy title to say he's focused on clouds and the upper atmosphere to see what is causing the ice to melt and the earth to warm. So there's a phenomenon here called Arctic haze, and particularly in the springtime, um, smoke and other kinds of air pollution will come up from uh, the south and get trapped here in the Arctic and get circulated around and eventually deposit out. Ivy says his group has proven this pollution and soot is heating the Earth's atmosphere. For the first time with these long, unprecedented long-term data sets in the Arctic, with research-grade instruments, we can see, yeah, we can correlate changes in carbon dioxide to changes in um, atmospheric forcing, which result in changes in, in warming. It's these changes that are causing the Arctic to warm twice as fast as any other place on Earth. In the short term, I would say that it's, it's, it's not a crisis, but it is a major, major challenge. Hayo Eichen arguably knows as much about Arctic ice as anyone on Earth. He's one of the leading climate researchers at the University of Alaska in Fairbanks, melted in the last 20 to 30 years. Much of that, coastal ice, that people and animals in the region depend on. While these are reasons to worry about the future, Eichen says the Arctic has a way of pulling people and nations together. I actually fully believe that international collaboration, you know, understanding of one's different viewpoints, but collaboration on, on issues that we, all of us, feel passionately about and share values is an important part of, of collaboration at the international level. To me, the Arctic is, is a prime spot where, where we can make this work independent of, of what the geopolitics of the day says. Climate change is a global problem that scientists say will take a global solution. The Arctic is bigger than any one nation. And in the end, many researchers say it's in everyone's best interest to make sure Wally Lisborne has an abundance of ice packed firmly under his feet. Not exactly a vacation spot, but really the Arctic is the one area that, dry, that uh, attracts the best scientists from all over the world. And it's interesting because they spend so much time talking with the indigenous population. Down here, it would be considered anecdotal information. But up there, Phil, the scientists look at it as historical information, and they lean on the longtime residents of that area. So the statistics show that the Earth is warming, and at least in this part, you say it's warming twice as fast, but they still don't know why at this point, right? They don't know exactly why. I mean, they, they, they Mark Ivey, the one gentleman that we did uh, spend a lot of time with up there, his group just recently confirmed that, yes, indeed, greenhouse gases are doing a lot to warm up uh, the Earth. If you think about it, the sun's powerful rays come through, cut right through the clouds. Then they hit. If the greenhouse gases, the smog pollution build up, builds up, then those, that energy just kind of bounces back and forth, and that causes the atmosphere to heat up. So if 50% has melted in, in that area... The polar cap, Let's yeah. say over the next couple of decades, another 50% were to melt. Well, then it'd be all gone. Or, or another 50% of the 50%. So what's the impact? 
Right. It's, it's, it's huge. Um, it's opening areas up. You know, we, t we already talked about the Northwest Passage, you know, taking a ship from the Atlantic to the Pacific. There are a lot of people who think that you're going to be able to go over the pole, over the North Pole. There's no land, it's just ice, before you're going to be able to go through the Northwest Passage, bringing uh, countries, companies, a lot more ships up there. And you heard in the first story, this area hasn't been charted. So the possibility of a collision, it would be yeah. you know, horrible. But we, we've talked about global, uh, global warming on the program uh, a number of times. And a lot of people say there's a point of no return. I mean, it sounds like to right, me, right. in all honesty, it sounds like we've already surpassed that point. Whatever they decide to do in Paris isn't going to make a difference now. It's not like it's going to cool the North Pole mm -hmm. to, to reverse all this stuff. It's, it's already in motion. Well, they're trying to pump the brakes on it try to get control of it, because if it does go beyond that two degrees centigrade, then it is to the point of no con, uh, re re return. At least that is the major concern. But uh, clearly, uh, Hayo Eichen, the one eye scientist, brilliant guy, he doesn't think it's a catastrophe. He thinks that enough to know, look, we have to make some serious changes. It may take a crisis to get us to that point. But you know, I ask all these people, what do you think about the deniers, those who say it's not caused by man? And really, there aren't a lot of nations that do that. The U.S. and Canada are among two, but most everywhere else, people have bought into this and saying, look, we have to do something, we have to do it now. Look at China this past week. Red alert. People don't want to live like that. Yeah. Well, it's a, look, it's a very serious issue. You've got the air pollution issue, you've got the emissions issue, and then you have the whole issue of the global warming. And of course, what you're talking about, we haven't even talked about rising sea levels yet, but of course, that's a whole other catastrophe in the making. It's interesting because the, the rising sea levels don't really come into play in the polar area because it's like if you have a drink and you have ice in your drink, as that ice melts, the water level doesn't go up. But say Greenland, where you have a massive ice sheet, as that melts and goes down into the ocean, that is causing a big problem.